Today, we're making the Elder Wand, popularized by the Harry Potter series, and soon, the movie Crimes of Grindelwald. This is a wand that you can make, all for about $5 or less. Interested? Here we go. My objective of this build is to make an Elder Wand that anyone can build. So the first thing you'll need is some Super Sculpey. This is my sixth wand. You need a slightly shorter than 15 inch dowel, which also turns out to be just around 38 centimeters. And how do I know that 38 centimeters is right? Because I bought an Elder Wand. But the key is to get all these bumps right. The first thing I did is transfer all the markings from the wand onto the stick. Pictograph, this is the end. I also put here for handle, H, and T for tip. And then these are the areas where the bumps are. We go in centimeters. Again, the hash marks is where the bumps are. For those who use inches instead of centimeters, hash marks to give you a point of reference when you make your dowel. I do have these tools, but you can make your own out of a dowel and some rounded nails to make those divots. The top and the bottom of this wand is rounded. What I found is just using a pencil sharpener on a quarter inch rod works really well at getting a point to work with. Real gentle strokes making grooves on these first two sections that are slightly less than a quarter of an inch. After the Dremel, I'm just going in with a light sanding sponge, rotating the dowel in my hand, and just knocking off all the rough edges, smoothing it out for painting. I think I've got a good technique. All I'm doing is just pressing into the dowel ever so slightly with blade and knife, making a little groove, two or three, four across. I'm gonna do all these knobs first on the dowel and then fill in the thickness with the Super Sculpey. This is gonna have to be really flat, little pictograph thing. I finished scoring all the way down the rod. Now I'm gonna just start applying clay a little bit at a time. Starting out with what I call snakes, and then add a little bit more. And you see, it's a little finicky. You wanna fuse this in, kinda of blended it out to where I want, and now I'm gonna start doing the holes. Holes are just a small brad nail, three millimeters wide, or just shy of an eighth of an inch. Make the holes random. They're about four across, and you can see as I'm pushing in the clay, it actually bulbs it out a little bit. Great thing about Sculpey, until you put it in the oven, you can really adjust it. It took me a couple times to get it right. You have to really press the clay into the wooden dowel. I end up using this little brass nail that's probably two millimeters, gently pressing right directly into the dowel. But now I'm pretty happy with the results of that one. I'll work myself down. Same technique. Another little snake of clay. Then you gotta just keep pressing it into the wooden dowel. Here's my marking lines. If you feel like you've put too much on, just pull it off a little bit at a time. You really want the holes random. I'm actually putting them on in a diagonal, and then they're fading as you go to the sides here. Continue to work my way down. This is almost a whole line, that thickness, rolling it around, squeezing it in. Here's the pictograph, so that's gonna be a real thin section. Sometimes you can twist it like this, but you wanna make sure it's as symmetric around as possible. The holes are getting bigger and bigger, so I'm going to use a brad nail. It's about a four millimeter. Sculpting this clay is a bit of trial and error. I know it looks a little bigger on this one, but trust me, when I put all the holes in, it's gonna be just about right. The clay is very forgiving, but it just doesn't want to stick to the dowel. That's why I roughed it up. So I took a bit of break overnight. I'm kind of happy the way these turned out, but I'm not real happy with this. There's just too much gap. I've been thinking about it and I'm gonna try some florist wire and wrap it around different parts and see if that makes a difference. Yeah, that one's loose too. Could be an epic failure. Pull it off, see what we got here. Yeah, it's a big gap. Same kind of deal. This is 22 gauge florist wire. Running it around like this just to give the clay something to grip to. It's pretty tight. Go all the way to the end. I'm gonna do it on this side too. I'm cutting off about 10 inches of wire. I'm going to start at this end this time and wrap it that way, just to lock all the wire in. 
That's in there really good. I like that. Okay, that's about 20 inches and this is about 40 inches. I went all the way to the end and took the last little nub off there. Now I'm going to put them all back on. See how it works. Yeah, I can feel a much better grip now. It's taking up space. It's really bonding to the wire. I added some clay here. Now I'm just going to put the divots back in and continue with the build. I've super glued a three quarter inch diameter five sixteenth inch washer just to give something for the clay to work up against. While I'm waiting for this to dry, I'm gonna fill in this piece here with a real thin snake and just kind of wrap it around, press it into the wire, break off what I don't need, and then just smooth it out. Sometimes the wire seems to peek out, but that's not gonna be a problem because we're gonna paint. I'm trying to work up and down the wand and have places to hold on to. This will be probably the last piece that I do. It's really, can't hardly make a mistake here. Now I'm just smearing clay on the top, put one donut on the bottom. I've, so this might be the most complicated part of the build so far, putting in these lines. So I'm, now I'm merging a really thin snake into the pictograph area. I'll smooth that all out. The snake is about the thickness, maybe a little bigger, of what you want for that clay area. And I'm just smoothing this out, making it uniform. Now I'm going to move and do this piece and this piece. The key is to show a graduation of the wand from thinner to thicker. Now that I have all the clay in place, I'm just pushing it up, gradually making it thinner here, thicker here. I'm using a really thin snake for this last section. All right, now I'll just smooth that out and gradually go from thin to thicker. I'm going to touch up all the divots and then put it in the oven and bake it. The elder wand is ready, put into the oven. The oven's at 275, and it's time to bake the wand. Set the timer for 15 minutes. One cooked elder wand. Sit there and let it cool. The paint for the elder wand can be all over the map. I've seen gray, black and gray, tan. I'm gonna start out with burnt umber and then highlight some of the details between here and show some wear with some real brown gloss. I'm gonna start with a number 10 paintbrush. Don't wanna to get too thick. I'm just filling the holes. We'll just start out with one color and if we need to add more to give it a little more detail, we certainly will. I considered like my Ron wand doing initial black for details in the holes and then with the burnt umber, but we'll try it this way first and see how it works out. You can always repaint over it. There's something to the value of creating your own wand and you should never discount that. And by the way, you can get a pretty impressive wand for just a couple bucks. This wand is easily built for under $5. And once you buy the paint, you can make dozens of wands just with this one two ounce bottle of paint. Get two and you can make two dozen wands with all sorts of different color combinations. Something to think about before you go spend $20, $30 on a fake or a real wand. Now what we're trying to do here with the real brown is take and age the elder wand. So we're really kind of dry brushing it a little bit here. It's one of those things where it's better to put on too little than too much. And the lighting can totally affect how the color looks. And on this dry brushing technique, I'm holding the brush flat so to make sure I don't go in the holes and I'm just hitting it really lightly on top. Most of the paint is off. Here it is with the highlights and then I ran into a couple holes so I went back and used the burnt umber with a very thin brush and kind of brought the holes back. So I took some cardstock and I made a whole bunch of these and then tried to find one that would work for my specific wand. So here's my trial with the thinner paper. And there you go. Just perfect. Decided I don't want to glue it, so I'm going to mount it on this double-sided tape to form and then tape it on that way. Now you could age this paper, you could use different colored paper. I'm just going to go with the white for contrast. Okay, after several trial and errors, I think I might have it. Bingo! I like the depth that you get with the two paints. Makes it pop. Here it's kind of flat. They tried to do that with a little bit of paint here. Thumbs up and comments always appreciated. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more wands and more prop builds coming soon.